The Boeing 737 MAX was supposed to be the jet that saved Boeing, a fuel-efficient workhorse that would dominate the skies for decades. But instead, it became a global headline for all the wrong reasons. Even now, years after it was cleared to fly again, something's still not right. Airlines are cautious, pilots remain skeptical, and Boeing, once the gold standard of aviation, is struggling to convince the world that the MAX truly deserves its place in the sky. So, what's still wrong with the 737 MAX? And why are airlines still wary of flying it? Back in the early 2010s, the world of commercial aviation was shifting. Airlines were no longer chasing size, they were chasing efficiency. Every drop of fuel mattered. Every extra mile per gallon could save millions. And Airbus saw this coming. In 2010, they unveiled the A320neo, NEO, standing for new engine option. It wasn't a new airplane. It was a smarter one. By simply re-engineering their best-selling A320 with larger, more efficient Pratt and & Whitney and CFM engines, Airbus promised up to 15% less fuel burn, fewer emissions, and quieter takeoffs. For airlines, that was irresistible. It meant lower operating costs without expensive retraining or infrastructure changes. Within months, orders flooded in from major carriers, Lufthansa, Indigo, AirAsia, American Airlines. Everyone wanted the NEO. And over at Boeing's headquarters in Chicago, alarms started ringing. The 737 had been Boeing's bread and butter for decades, the world's most popular jetliner. But suddenly, their loyal customers were switching sides. Airlines that had flown Boeing fleets for generations were signing deals with Airbus. Inside Boeing, the pressure was immense. Executives feared losing billions. They couldn't afford to spend 10 years developing a brand new aircraft, not when Airbus was already ahead and delivering planes. So they made a decision, one that would change Boeing forever. Rather than building a clean sheet successor, Boeing would update the 737 again. Give it new, larger engines. Upgrade the cockpit. Improve the cabin. And most importantly, keep it under the same type rating so pilots wouldn't need new training. It was a move born from urgency, not vision. But it worked, at least at first. In 2011, Boeing officially announced the 737 MAX, powered by Advanced Leap, 1B engines, equipped with the newest flight deck systems and featuring modern passenger comforts. It was marketed as the evolution of a legend. The slogan practically wrote itself. The 737 you know, but better. Airlines bought into the dream. By 2018, the MAX had accumulated over 5,000 orders, making it Boeing's fastest-selling jet in history, even surpassing the 777. For a moment, it looked like Boeing had done it again. They had outmaneuvered Airbus, restored investor confidence, and secured their future in the narrow-body market. But behind the celebration, engineers whispered concerns. The new engines were bigger, much bigger, and they sat differently on the wing. The 737's classic low stance made integrating them tricky, forcing changes to the aircraft's aerodynamics. Still, with billions on the line and deliveries promised, there was no turning back. The 737 MAX was set to take flight, but the compromises made to build it quickly would soon come back to haunt Boeing. The trouble began with those new, larger engines. They were so big, they didn't fit properly under the 737's low-slung wings, a design dating back to the 1960s. So Boeing engineers pushed the engines forward and higher on the wing. That changed the plane's aerodynamics. In certain situations, it caused the nose to pitch upward more than expected, risking a stall. Rather than redesigning the entire aircraft, which would have required a new certification and training costs for pilots, Boeing came up with a software fix, MCOS, or the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. MCOS was designed to automatically push the nose down if it detected a high angle of attack. But here's the catch. It relied on data from just one sensor. If that sensor failed, the system could mistakenly force the plane into a dive. And that's exactly what happened. In October 2018, Lion Air Flight 610 took off from Jakarta. Just minutes later, it began an erratic climb and dive pattern before plunging into the Java Sea. All 189 people on board were killed. Boeing assured the world it was an isolated issue. But less than five months later, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed under almost identical circumstances. 157 more lives were lost. The world was in shock. 
Within days, regulators grounded the 737 MAX worldwide, the largest grounding of a commercial aircraft in modern history. Investigations revealed a disturbing pattern of cost-cutting, communication failures, and design shortcuts. MCOS hadn't been fully disclosed to pilots. Some internal Boeing emails even showed employees joking about how little training was needed because Boeing had sold the MAX as just another 737. For Boeing, the damage was catastrophic. The 737 MAX was grounded for 20 long months, the longest grounding in the history of commercial aviation. For nearly two years, the jet that was supposed to represent Boeing's future sat idle, wings folded, under the weight of its past mistakes. Rows of gleaming aircraft were parked in deserts, on remote airfields, even at Boeing's own factory lots, silent reminders of a crisis that had shaken the world's trust in American aviation. Each one represented millions of dollars lost, and thousands of jobs hanging in the balance. Inside Boeing, the mood had changed from confidence to survival. Regulators demanded answers, airlines demanded compensation, and the public demanded reassurance that this would never happen again. Boeing engineers worked around the clock. They tore apart flight control systems, rewrote software lines, and added layers of redundancy to the MCOS system, the same one that had caused two crashes. They restructured pilot training programs, introduced new cockpit alerts, and rebuilt the company's relationship with regulators that had once been too cozy. It was an enormous effort, not just technical, but emotional. By late 2020, after countless tests, reviews, and simulations, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration finally cleared the MAX to return to service. Slowly, cautiously, the jet began to take off again, first in the United States with American Airlines and Southwest, then in Europe, followed by Brazil, and later across Asia and Latin America. But even as the wheels lifted off the runway, a different challenge remained, trust. For passengers, the name MAX had become synonymous with tragedy. Surveys showed that many travelers went out of their way to avoid it, checking aircraft types before booking, switching flights, or even paying extra just to avoid boarding a MAX. Airlines, too, were hesitant. Some delayed their deliveries. Others converted orders to Airbus A320 Neos. And in China, one of Boeing's most important markets, the MAX remained largely grounded long after other countries had brought it back. Boeing had fixed the software, but repairing its reputation would take far longer. For decades, the Boeing name had stood for engineering excellence and trust. Now, it faced a new reality, one where passengers second-guessed the brand, and airlines measured Boeing not by its legacy, but by its accountability. And while the 737 MAX is once again flying thousands of flights each day, the scars of its grounding still linger. A reminder that in aviation, even the smallest design decision, made under pressure, can echo for years across the entire sky. You'd think that after all this, Boeing would be extra careful, but the problems didn't stop there. In recent years, new manufacturing defects have appeared, including mis-drilled holes in fuselage sections, wiring issues, and loose bolts found in rudder control systems. Each time, deliveries were paused, inspections ordered, and headlines resurfaced. To the flying public, it looked like the MAX was still cursed. And for airlines, it meant more delays, less predictability, and lower trust in Boeing's promises. Even Boeing's biggest customer, Southwest Airlines, has voiced frustration over recurring production delays. Meanwhile, rival Airbus is delivering a 320 Neos faster, more reliably, and with fewer issues. The result? Airlines have started hedging their bets, ordering more from Airbus and diversifying their fleets. For airlines, the 737 MAX isn't just another aircraft on the fleet list, it's a calculated risk. A risk of grounding. A risk of delays. A risk of public backlash. Because owning a MAX doesn't just mean operating a jet, it means carrying the weight of its history. On paper, the aircraft performs beautifully. It's quiet, fuel-efficient, and capable of flying longer routes than its predecessors. Pilots often praise its handling, its cockpit upgrades, its smooth climb. Technically, Boeing has built a good airplane. But perception, that's a different story. The problem is, the MAX doesn't live in a vacuum. Every time a MAX flight diverts for a technical reason, even something routine like a sensor issue or a warning light, it becomes headline news. 
social media explodes, passengers post photos, and within hours, the same old question resurfaces. Is the 737 MAX really safe? And for airlines, that kind of attention is dangerous. It damages consumer confidence. It affects ticket sales. Even a temporary grounding, or the hint of one, can throw entire schedules into chaos. Behind the scenes, executives still remember the 20 months when hundreds of jets sat parked, earning nothing. They remember passengers asking not to fly on them. And they remember the difficult calls with Boeing, asking when, or if, those aircraft would return to the skies. That memory doesn't fade easily. So while most airlines continue to operate the MAX, because they must, because it's efficient, they do so with caution. Some keep extra aircraft on standby. Others diversify their fleets, ordering more Airbus jets as a hedge against future problems. For Boeing, this is the lingering wound. They've fixed the software, redesigned the systems, improved the training, but trust doesn't come with a patch or a software update. It's earned slowly, over time, one safe flight at a time. And until the day comes when passengers no longer flinch at the word max, that trust, fragile and incomplete, will remain Boeing's biggest challenge yet. Boeing says it's turning a corner. Inside its factories, changes are happening, quietly, but deliberately. Production standards are being overhauled. Quality checks are tighter. Management has been reshuffled. And for the first time in years, engineers, not executives, are being given more control over how airplanes are built. The company is working hand-in-hand -hand with regulators, promising that safety will no longer be a checkbox, but the foundation of everything they do. And to Boeing's credit, the 737 MAX has now completed millions of safe flight hours since its return. But the world hasn't forgotten. The MAX became more than an airplane. It became a symbol of what happens when speed, cost, and competition push too far. A reminder that in aviation, every shortcut has a price. Boeing's challenge now isn't designing wings or engines. It's rebuilding something far more fragile. Trust. That kind of recovery doesn't happen overnight. It's earned slowly, one safe flight at a time, one quiet takeoff, one smooth landing. Each journey carrying not just passengers, but the weight of a promise that the lessons of the MAX will never be forgotten. And maybe, one day, when the name MAX no longer sparks doubt but quiet confidence, that's when Boeing will truly have taken off again. The 737 MAX flies today because engineers made it safe again, but it still flies under a shadow, a reminder that in aviation, reputation can be just as important as reliability. So the question remains, can Boeing ever make the world truly believe in the MAX again?